Hello and welcome to episode 43 of Teach Tech Play. I'm Eleni Karitsis and I'm the host and founder of Teach Tech Play. Today we have a fantastic show with some wonderful Australian educators here who will be sharing a range of tools. Before I introduce them, I'd just like to congratulate last month's winner, Trent Ray, who shared Microbit Challenge. And I know that he is running his event this week, so good luck to him with that and hopefully a lot more educators um, upskill themselves in using Microbit in the classroom and make sure you reach out to him if you have any questions. Now, before I throw over to our wonderful presenters, do not forget to vote for your favourite presenter. So you can head over to teachtechplay.com forward slash web show and here you can see all our previous episodes as well as voting for your favourite presenter from today's show. So let's introduce our wonderful presenters. Um, first up, we've got Phil. So Phil, we've had you previously on the show, but do you want to remind everyone where you're from, what you do? Yeah, great. Thanks. Thanks for having me back, Elaine. It's really exciting. Um, I'm the Head of Digital Technologies and E-Learning at Turak College in Mount Eliza. So I um, work with ELC students right up to Year 12 and um, yeah, train staff, parents and students in the use of technology. Uh, I teach Year 7 Technology, but I also teach uh, Year 11 and 12 Media as well. So lots of fun, always busy. <laughs> Perfect. Great to have you back on the show. Um, Angela, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us where you're from and what you teach? Hi, I'm Angela. I am a stage one teacher at St Luke's at Marsden Park. I teach stage one, I said it already. Um, uh, St Luke's is only in its second year, so it is a brand new school. Um, I joined the team this year and we are doing some pretty cool things with capabilities and tech. So that's me. Perfect. Thank you. And just for um, Victorian and Queensland people, because we don't use stage one, two, three. Oh, so sorry, that's... year one, year two. Perfect. Thank you. Just so other viewers know what you are talking about. I remember we had someone else on the show and they're like, I'm a stage three teacher. And I was like, a what teacher? <laughs> so um, obviously we all work in Australia, but we have different terms in different states. So always good to just clarify that for everyone. And last but not least, Lorinda, I had the privilege of meeting you. I think we'd met a few times, but properly met you the other week at Google. So um, it was great to get you on the show as well. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Um, I'm Lorinda. I'm a digital coach at Wesley College here in Melbourne. And most of my time is spent um, working with teachers one-on-one, -on -one, coaching them through different strategies to use in the classroom um, with digital technologies. Um, also cover a lot of Google, Microsoft um, and robotics, etc. cetera. Um, and the other part of my role is co-teaching with teachers. So anywhere from ECLC right through to year 12, um, sort of co-teaching and, and helping teachers sort of in the flesh in the classroom with those tech skills. Perfect. Thank you, Lorinda. And it's great to have you on the show as well. So to kick off our show today, we will have Phil and you'll be sharing with us creativity with Google Slides. And Google Slides is something that I absolutely love. So I can't wait to see that. So let me know when you're ready, Phil, and I will start the timer. Great, thank you. Do my share. Is that share all good? Uh, yep, perfect, when you're Great. ready. Perfect. Um, so today I will be discussing creativity with Google Slides um, and really um, chatting about that design process. So hopefully you can take some tips and tricks away. Um, you know, fingers crossed you learn one new thing. Um, but I'll go through a few different tips and tricks in this um, brief little session. So of course, um, I'll reference the four C's of 21st century learning, uh, focusing on um, that uh, creativity. And really, um, you know, we're using slides. So we'll talk about how G Suite tools can uh, really allow you to create a foster, uh, foster a creative mindset and then link to those different four C's as well. Um, what I do with my students uh, when we are, you know, doing a presentation, design task, a poster, always create a design agreement. And I think mainly because I'm a total control freak, that's why I do that. But um, <laughs> there's, a, you know, a few other reasons. Like I know as educators, we've definitely seen those presentations that may, uh, you know, those slides that are just jam-packed, like text everywhere, um, you know, they're all a bit um, busy. Um, but yeah, these, these really help. So I use these with my year sevens, my year twelves. 
just works to really set some constraints. So definitely yeah, don't use too much text, images that are labeled for reuse, uh, incorporate the art elements and principles. So that really links nicely, especially with my year sevens, I can say, you know, I know you're doing this in year seven art, let's bring that into tech, which um, is great. Um, and then as again, control freak, I just don't like the font Comic Sans. Like it's just no, no reason. I just don't really like it. So um, yeah, I put that on, but then it always backfires because you know, my students will go, oh, well, if he doesn't like it, then I'll submit my assessment in Comic Sans. So um, yeah, it's always fun, always fun. <laughs> um, so just with uh, slides and using images in our presentations, it's really important to encourage students to use images that are labelled for reuse. So we want, um, I'll just go in, I always like to share, I'll just search the beach where we'd rather be on this uh, cold Melbourne morning. Um, so let's go here, when we go into tools in um, images, we can click size, um, usage rights, we always want to start with usage rights, make sure that's labelled for reuse. Then I always um, encourage the students to go size higher than 800 by 600. That's just, you know, looking at the resolution. So we don't want any pixelated images. If it wasn't an image of the beach, you could also go color transparent and that will make, um, that will, yeah, won't have a background on that image. So if your slides are black maybe, um, then you won't have that white background. So that's really handy. So just some um, little searching tips. Um, and then from there, when we're setting up our slide deck, um, if you go file page setup, you can actually change the custom view of your slides. So instead of having it as the standard four to three, 16 to nine, you can change them. Um, so, you know, you might change it for a banner size, uh, for an A3 portrait poster instead of landscape. This is a really great activity um, that you could try. It works really well with um, junior students. Um, so if you're not at the stage of actually making an app, you can go through and um, make those design iterations. So the size for a phone is One seven, minute. Uh, seven to 12 centimetres. Uh, so that works really, really well um, for the design um, iterations. Other tips, uh, use fonts.google.com for over 800 fonts. If people are saying, you know, docs or uh, slides don't have enough fonts, Palette Creator is a really great add-on flying through. Um, when we're pasting um, work, you can use Command Shift V instead of just uh, Command V. That will keep the formatting of your sites uh, of your slides. Um, hold Shift when you're moving an image so it moves in smaller um, increments. Drag and uh, click and drag your images from Google Images into your Slides tab. Use Slides Carnival. You'll waste a lot of time on Slides Carnival trying to find. There's some examples on the right. Trying to find that perfect template. Um, which I did, of course, for this. Um, and then um, when you are sharing, um, this is a really great tool, when you are sharing your URL, so say I'm sharing these slides, if I change um, the edit in the top URL, if I change edit to present, when I share that with students or staff, it will share it in presenter mode. Um, some examples just really quickly um, for students. This works in any year level, um, get them to do some research infographics. So this was uh, year 10 media looking at the theme of curiosity. So I just set some constraints of, you know, use two images, a video, a GIF maybe, something you knew, three points of research. Works really well for whole class to see how everyone else can interpret that one word. If you haven't used AutoDraw, check out AutoDraw. I won't give a demo because time's up, but AutoDraw is amazing and you'll waste some time um, on that site too. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you, Phil. And yes, we've had Auto Jaw showcased, I yeah, think a couple so of episodes ago. So I know Zena um, from Aussie Ed shared it mm. through her um, artificial intelligence session that she ran on Teach Tech Play. So um, viewers, you can always go and see that as well for a bit more on Auto Draw. And I have a feeling it was shared earlier as well in the previous episode. I can't remember the exact one. There's too many being 43 already. Um, huge thank you. And yes, those little tips and tricks, I think really enhance student creativity that, you know, Google Slides can be used more than just a presentation tool. And um, I love it, especially when you're working as a class. I know being a primary teacher, sometimes I don't want to open up different slide decks for every single group. So mm -hmm. putting them all on the same one and just saying you're on slide one, two, three makes it easier for printing out, especially posters, um, you know, how you change the setup of the um, slide and then you can just print them out, which is always handy as well as a teacher. Anything to save time that little yeah. bit. Did anyone else have any questions or comments for Phil? No, no that's good. Nope. 
Oh, good, good Phil. You, you're off you. the hook then, nice and easy. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you, Phil. Next up, we have Angela. And Angela, you'll be sharing how you're using technology in literacy. So, um, and linking it authentically, which we always love. Um, so let me know when you are ready and I will hmm. share the timer. I will attempt to share my screen. Not share the timer, start the timer. <laughs> right. Can you guys see that? Yep, perfect. Perfect. All right, I'm ready. Um, so I'm talking about um, technology in literacy and I am an early years teacher, so that is my focus. Um, the first one is using Ozobots. We are very fortunate at our school to have Ozobots um, and a whole range of coding and robotics sets for our students to use. So um, Story Retails, you give students a um, kind of grid and they can retell the parts of the story using pictures and then they stick it on an A3 piece of paper and they can draw the track around it and retell the story to a partner. So here's a little picture of my students in action. You can see that they've drawn the track with their pictures and they are encouraged to use the codes for the parts of the story. So if someone's running away from something, they can include the turbocharge code, which allows the Ozobot to go a bit faster. Or if they want a little bit of time to explain that part of the story, they can put in the pause code, which um, slows the Ozobot down and gives them a little bit of time to share the story with their partner. Um, Spheros, this is um, an activity that I adapted from Peter Apt, who has a website called Teaching with the iPad. Um, so what we did, we spread out um, rhyming words all over the floor. And I don't know if this will play. Um, I know word that rhymes with list. So the students worked with partners on that and they had to drive the Sphero to the rhyming word. So um, that word was this. Um, they worked with partners, but even the partner that wasn't driving the iPad at the time was really engaged because they were trying to find the word that um, rhymed. So that was that one. Um, app Smashers with YouTube and Pic Collage, another retail type of activity that students um, can watch a YouTube clip. Recently we did um, Rodney Loses It, which is the book that won the book awards for um, Literacy Week this year. Um, and they take screenshots as they watch and they can sequence the story, they can retell the story, um, they can pick their favourite parts and label it. And I have an example there. Um, my students recently worked out how to animate on Pic Collage. So they can, their images kind of scoot into place. And now I use HyperDocs for my literacy tasks. One minute. Like I need to put a proviso on this that I don't really feel that in the early years I use them to the best of their ability, but still we link it in with Google Classroom and it kind of links them directly to what they need to be doing for tasks that week. And lucky last is lately I have been using some digital text. I wrote a blog about it. Um, there's kind of three um, really good ones I've found lately. The first two are more for younger years, but the flat is perfect for um, really probably older years, probably 11 and 12, I would say. Um, it's a digital text that you kind of explore a flat on a time limit with some poetry involved in that. And yeah, it's a really cool text. I've spent a lot of time exploring it and trying to find out if there's kind of like a game maze type activity. So yeah, that's my five ways to integrate technology into literacy for the early years. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Did I give you your one minute warning? I don't know if I unmuted. My yeah, I did. Perfect. I was like, did I unmute when I said it? 
said that then um really great ideas and you know i think um the way that you're connecting both coding and literacy in literacy to retell stories um is a really great way to sort of enhance student learning and make it engaging and meaningful. Um, online texts, there are a range of websites um, for digital text, just so you, I don't know if you've seen Epic. Yeah. 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 And um, another one I love using is Storyline Online. That one's mm. got a whole heap as well, which are always good because sometimes you want to sort of set your kids to doing an independent reading where they can listen and follow yeah. on. The um, ones I shared are more interactive ones. But oh, okay. Way. Um, dandelion and cosmo stay off our interactive ipad apps oh perfect text, um associated with them but yeah storyline online for um set and forget type activities perfect perfect no i hadn't heard of those ones i didn't know if they were the titles of a story or if they were mm. an app so no great to um get some more resources that we can always integrate into our classrooms did anyone else have any questions or comments just a quick comment. Um, that was so inspiring seeing such um, integral ways of integrating into um, English and literacy activities because often the most perfect fit we seem to, to fit it into is maths. Um, but it can be integrated seriously across any subject. So really great to see those, Angela. Thanks so much. Bill, anything? No? Yeah, no, I was just thinking, um, have you used um, Scratch Junior with your lower like we we, ones and twos or we are just starting to um we used ozo not ozo bots blue bots to start introducing um some block code because yeah, you can connect them to the app and now we are just starting with scratch junior yeah great that's so exciting i think yeah again I agree with lorinda like really inspirational to see you know just so quickly five different uh, ways that you can integrate that um literacy i think is an area that there is so much scope, but you know, when there's, you know, students need to get through certain sections yeah. to bring this into it is going to help with that engagement. So awesome. Love it. And you just said about blue bots. I just wrote a blog post on B bots, which are the same as blue bots, just non Bluetooth connectability <laughs> um, and how to use them in literacy. So I wrote that for modern teaching aids. So if anyone wanted some ideas of that as well, you can go there, but yeah, there's so many ways and scratch junior. I think your students will absolutely love um, oh, yeah. and it's a perfect connection to sort of build up their knowledge of coding and their understanding. Um, I loved how you had the spheres with all the sounds on the floor. I know I was doing something similar with the B bots and my students the other day. Um, we used the thrust in our year one classroom so I made a big thrust board on the floor and so they would roll a dice and then connect make the bebop move to all the different sounds on the thrust um, board which was pretty cool as well so Very I liked cool. your rhyming words um, I'll be definitely taking that back to my year one team um, so thank you for that next up is myself so I will just share my screen and um, be ready to go so um, today, let me just start the timer so I don't go over. Today, I'm going to be sharing um, some new updates to Google Classroom. So, I'm going to go into an old class that I have here in my um, demo account. So, in the old Google Classroom, you had the stream and people, and you would simply go through it and you could post all your assignments and everything already there. Um, a lot of people were finding this a bit overwhelming, um, just having everything there, trying to find things. You could also um, search things via top on the left hand side and your about has moved and a lot of people are wondering where that's gone if you were already using classroom this year about is now just sitting over here on the right hand side so it's just changed its view slightly but um, it is still there so it does appear slightly different but still similar whereas if you created a new class today and if I just go back to my classes I have a demo class for 2018 because of the American school year everything is back to school even though here in Australia we know we are in the middle of the school year and middle of a term so sending out a new update sometimes isn't always 
great for us. So this only works if you set up a new class from now on. Um, so a lot of schools have been asking me, what do I do? I would just keep your class as it is because realistically you've probably got about 14 weeks left and I wouldn't be changing everything now, but obviously it is up to you. But the difference between um, the old classroom and the new classroom is you now have a stream where you still see all the assignments posted, but it doesn't give you the actual assignment. You have to click onto it, which will then go into it, which I also think is kind of good. And I'll just go back. So um, I can then come back to that. And you've still got everything there. Now you don't have your topics here. Um, so you can't filter by topics, which some people find a bit irritating. Um, but when you click on classwork, this is now divided up into all of your topic areas. So your create button now is up on the top right hand side if you're creating an assignment. And when you click on that, you can see you get the different options. There is another feature that has not been rolled out yet where you'll also be able to create Google Forms directly in Classroom, which will be really helpful for teachers. And when that is rolled out, it will also give you the option to lock the student's device down when you create the form so they can't open other tabs. But obviously that will only work if your student is on a Chromebook. Um, so just to be aware of that. I haven't played with it, so I don't know all the functionality yet. I've just heard that's what's coming. But I can create a new topic here for maths and add that there. Now, when I add my topics, um, I, it goes straight to the bottom, but if I want this at the top, so say it's a new unit that my class is looking at, you can actually move it up. So um, you can move these topics around so they appear with the most recent topic or subject area for your class ready to go. The other great thing is when you create an assignment, um, if I'm just doing a test one here, and I don't want it to go out yet, so I can set my due date. Um, it's all the same. You don't have to have a marking system. You can leave it ungraded. I know working in primary, we don't really grade anything like what Classroom has. And you can also select your topic um, directly in here. And you can also add assignments to multiple classes or to just specific students. Um, but as I don't want that to go out yet, I don't want it to be shown visible to my kids tomorrow till they're back at school. Um, I can just click out of it. Oh my gosh, that was so quick. And it's got the draft there. I'm going to quickly go into an assignment because this is the one feature that is amazing that everyone will be blown away by. Um, so when you click on an assignment, you can see the turned in and assigned. So when you click on turned in, a really big problem was you kept having to open other ones. But if I click on John Adams now, it will open it up and it has this sort of grading workflow over the top. So I can actually click on something in here and I can add a comment. I've lost my little comment feature here, but that's okay. Here it is. So I can add a comment, but I can actually have a bank of comments. So if I just hit the hashtag here, sometimes, you know, you can say, great job. I've really understood, see you have understood the task and post that. So you can actually have the same comments posted. And here in the comment bank, you can add more, which is really handy. And you can also put your grade directly in here. So you got 100 and um, then I can hit return at the top. But then the other great thing is instead of going back to classroom, I can just click next up the top here and it will take it to the next student's work who I need to mark and grade. So that sort of workflow for teachers is really handy. And I'm just gonna quickly show that comment feature again. When you click on it and go to add your comment, I can even start typing in the box. Now it's not working, but it generally appears. Otherwise, you can use the hashtag again if you want to know how to use that comment bank. And I'm going to stop there because that was a very quick little introduction. Um, but, yeah, there's some of the cool new features. I could have continued to talk for another 20 to 30 minutes. But, um, 
yeah, there are still new things coming out. And oh, I should have just said, if you have any feedback, because a lot of people are not happy with some of the features in Classroom, like everything that comes out, um, you, if you just go into um, Classroom, you'll see, if I just go back to classes, into my demo class, there is the question mark down in the bottom left hand side and you can send feedback directly there to Google. So if you want to share something or change something, um, you can let them know. But if you want to know more on Classroom, definitely check out Alice Keeler or Casey Bell's website. Um, they've got lots of updates and I know we've had them on the show previously um, in regards to Classroom. But yeah, that was very quick. That four minutes went a lot faster than I thought. Um, did anyone else have any questions or comments about the new Classroom? It's, uh, oh. Sorry, you got you. <laughs> it's it's funny that you mentioned that they get ready for the American school year because I was using Classroom the other day in my class, and the I went to find the Classroom code for my kids to log in and could not find it, and I was like, "What has happened to Classroom?" Yeah, so it's just in the banner now on the right hand side. So um, yeah, it's a little bit different. There's a few other things like the about now doesn't show like it used to. Um, there's a few things that aren't. Yeah, but there's also really, other things. I love the comment bag too. That's a cool tip. Yeah, so easy. And you can also add multiple comments. So if you've got, you know, I always say, great job, you've done a really good job, but blah, blah, blah. So they can already be typed in so you don't have to control C, control V all the time and get them all mixed up, which is really handy. Very cool. Phil, yeah, you had a question? Say, yeah, I was just going to say how um, I love that workflow. Like that's a pretty big game changer in the, um, you know, the way that we're marking and saving time, like that's, you know, my way yeah. using tools. That's, so. I think, something that has needed to happen. Um, mm. And I like how the assignments now are separate so they don't get lost within the feed. But, yeah, you could talk about the updates for another 10, yeah, 20 that's minutes, a whole really. Show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could have just done it. Welcome to the new update show. Um, but, yeah, just hopefully, and if you have any questions, just reach out to me, happy to help out. Um, but yeah, it's a bit annoying for teachers here. Obviously, things have changed because it's not the new school year, but I would just hold your horses and refresh it next year. You don't want to cause any confusion with your students, obviously. And there's more to come as well. So um, not everyone will have it yet. That was the other thing I was going to say. It is a slow rollout process. So some features will appear at different times. Um, yeah, so I would probably be waiting till next year if I was in Australia till they're all completely out and um, you've had a bit of time to play yourself, which is always nice to have a play before the students as a teacher. Um, perfect. Alrighty, we'll keep moving because I've taken up more than my four minutes, um, as I always do. But um, Lorinda, you're up next and you will be sharing with us, and I've just lost it, um, Be Internet um, Awesome. So um, let me know when you are ready and I will start the timer. Alrighty, let me just get my screen happening. This one here. There we go. All right, ready. Um, I just thought I'd introduce to you all um, some of the uh, features and things that have come out um, that Google have introduced into the digital citizenship space. Um, some of you already heard of Be Internet Awesome, um, their online curriculum, which is available for anyone worldwide. Um, and you can easily head to those different things. I've got some links here to all of the different things that I'll be talking about. Um, but the first is that it's um, just over one years old and Be Internet Awesome um, is a full website if you take a look at it online with plenty of resources which help kids get the most out of the internet and make smart decisions. There's plenty of new features in there um, which they've got feedback on over the past year. Um, but they fall into five key areas. The first one, share with care. Um, so being able to communicate responsibly online, not falling for fake, securing your secrets. It's cool to be kind um, and being internet brave. So when in doubt, talking it out. And probably some of the most awesome features of it is that it comes with a full curriculum. Um, so here's just an example of one of the lessons for share with care. So it has a bit of an overview, the themes, um, it addresses the International Society for Technology and Education, ISTE standards for educators and students. Um, and then it goes through things like vocabulary, um, activities and worksheets and things that you can do um, with your classes. 
Um, so that's all available, all of those um, PDFs with the curriculum um, available in the resources section, which is up on the top right um, of that particular website. The other awesome thing is that it has a game that goes along with it called Interland um, and it addresses those key areas of being um, awesome on the internet. So you actually get to be this li lovely little guy um, and you can play on the different worlds. And I've run this with teachers to teach them about how to use this in their classroom and often they get a little bit addicted to playing along. Um, so when I run a session on Be Internet Awesome, I usually have to dedicate at least 20 minutes um, for teachers to have a play because they get fully uh, wrapped up in the little worlds. Um, so each of them are quite dynamic um, and really great to use with your students. Um, going along with that, you may have seen previous Teach Tech Play sessions um, using things like um, Pear Deck. Um, it comes now with some customised Google Slides, which are tailor-made for the Be Internet Awesome curriculum. So all you have to do is find the topic that you're presenting on and head to um, the Google Slide that we'd like. You can easily make a copy and then they're fully um, set up and ready for Pear Deck. Um, for your students to actually interact with the different questions such as, you know, um, they're, they're very American based. Um, so if it says something like social security numbers, you'll need to, to go in there and try and change that for something else. One minute. Um, great. It looks like it's a problem. Sorry, my Google Home is reacting to, to what I'm talking about here. Um, and I'd have to say that the Be Internet Awesome curriculum is very focused on the primary years. So if you are looking for some resources or things that are for the upper years, um, I'd definitely take a look at things like Family Link, which Google also have, um, to take a look at screen time. Um, and if children have an Android device, et cetera, they've got instructions on how to remotely lock um, and do things with the apps that um, students and children use. I'd also take a look at the Digital Citizenship and Safety course, which is in the Google for Education Teacher Centre. Um, it's got some amazing videos, which I've used with secondary students. Um, and it's also a great sort of hour long course for teachers to work their way through. I'd also have a quick look at some of the online safety roadshow activities. Um, and all of the links are in that document, um, which I'll put the link up for again. Um, but there's some great ones there um, for grades six to eight um, and nine to 10. Um, and following on from those roadshow activities, um, there's also the Google Safety Centre, which actually has all of the resources for um, parents, families and teachers. And finally, just yeah, some of those other um, documents from the Google Safety Centre. Um, we've got some booklets with some great handouts, um, which have things like securing your passwords and preventing identity theft. So if you are teaching in those upper grades, if the Big Internet Awesome curriculum is a bit too kiddy, um, there's definitely those ones there. And finally, um, if you are working with the students, there's a whole range of stickers and posters that you can print out um, to put around your room um, so that you can really um, integrate that across um, many subjects and have that front and centre in your classroom. So just to finish off with, um, there's all the links in this document here and there's the link for it if you'd like to check more of those out. Perfect. Thank you, Lorinda. And we'll also share that out, um, that link out via our Twitter account. So make sure you, if you want that, you can get it there as well. But huge thank you for sharing that. Um, you know, we, there are so many things out there for cyber safety and Be Internet Awesome is quite amazing what they have created and it's continued to develop. I know when it first came out, a few people were like, oh, it doesn't really do or go as far as I want it to. But, you know, like most things Google, they um, continue to improve and add to it um, and they listen to your feedback. So mm -hmm. on all their products, so you'll find a little question mark like what I showed you in Google Classroom and they actually want teacher feedback. So make sure if you are a teacher and have a suggestion or something, do send it to them because they do listen. And both Lorinda and I were at Google in Melbourne, actually. It was quite nice to go to the Melbourne office the other week and um, they were asking us our opinions on classroom and a few other things so they do listen and want to help us as best they can so make sure you do reach out to them. Did anyone else have any questions or comments for Lorinda? I think just yeah amazing resources and to see them all you know you you know you're aware of them but to have them all in that doc that you've shared is um yeah amazing definitely a resource I'll be able to use thanks Lorinda it's really yeah. good. We're playing that game. I yeah, spent a bit of time on it. it it's, yeah, you can get addicted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like, okay, students, stop playing, but you're playing yourself, so it doesn't always work. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, I'm the same, amazing resources. Um, I had not seen those, so that was cool to see and see how I might be able to integrate it with our little ones at school. Super. Perfect, thank you. Well, that actually brings us to the end of the show. Now, I know, Phil, you have something you'd like to share, but before you do, I just want to share with everyone the slide to vote. So make sure you do vote for your favourite presenter so we know who is the king or queen for episode 43. And if you'd like to see any of our other episodes, just head to teachtakeplay.com forward slash web show. Um, and if you have any questions or anything, please reach out to me. I did mention last month that I am now available to support schools um so um let me know if you need any help with anything or i can connect you with someone if i do not have the answer as well um, that's the bonus thing of teach tech play i think uh, it has allowed me to connect with a range of educators so a lot of the time i may not have the answer but i know who to go to for when you have a question and what it is um, so phil i'm going to throw over to you because you have something you'd like to share with the teach tech play community particularly those people in melbourne or mornington specifically right. thanks so much i just want to say a really spruik um, i'm uh, running the google educator group for the mornington peninsula so our third event we've had an event in term two term three and then our um, third event for term four will be on november 15th so thursday november 15th You've got lots of time <laughs> trying to have um, our numbers have been growing, but for this one, we locked that date in so early. So, you know, I'm thinking maybe like three, four hundred. I'm guessing. Oh maybe, yeah, um, that would be perfect. That many. <laughs> <laughs> hoping for like 40. 40 is great. Um, yeah. But for this session, it'll be um, yeah really exciting. We've got educators from primary, secondary schools, but not just on the peninsula. Anyone, you know, you can come from any school. Um, but this session we'll, we'll have six deep dives. So we'll be using our library space and be having, um, you know, 45, 50 minute sessions on a range of different um, G Suite tools. So if you can come along, that would be great. Thursday, November 15th. Perfect. Thank Shoot you, Phil. And I was lucky enough to be down there at the last one. And it was great just to connect with a range of educators using Google in their classroom. And in doing that, you had people from advanced who'd been using it for years to people who are just starting out that journey. So it's great to connect and share and see what everyone's doing. And your school always put on a wonderful spread as well. So if you want some good afternoon tea, make sure you head down there to connect. Um, it is free. So um, it's free PD for you as a teacher. So 15th of November, correct? Yes, that's right. Yes, free PD. And I think you know, it really starts lots of conversations and it's a great networking tool to you know, work with other teachers. Yeah. And even if you don't know anything about Google, you can also come as well and learn from others. Um, so right, that you. brings us to the end of the show. And I want to thank all our presenters for the wonderful um, presentations that they shared. And please do reach out to any of them if you have any questions or comments. And we will see you for episode 44. That is crazy to think. Um, next next month and we'll have a range of educators showcasing a range of different tools. So thanks again to all our wonderful presenters and I look forward to seeing everyone next month. See ya.